All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you guys another video. So I hope you're all doing well and that you're having a great day. Today is March 10th of 2020. What we are taking a look at here today in the news, Cardano unleashing scalability through Hydra sharding. So giving you all my thoughts on that, as well as some perspective from Charles Hoskinson. Taking a look also in the news, Brave's Bat Rewards can now be redeemed at Amazon, Apple, and Netflix. And last up, what we're going to be taking a look at, giving you all some of my thoughts on Bitcoin and how I like to use TradingView to use technical analysis in my charting. All right, everyone, if you are interested in that type of content today, be sure to smash that like button for me. If you guys are new to the channel and if you enjoy content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I post cryptocurrency content like this as often as I can. I wanna keep you guys informed and up to date. Click that notification bell so you can get notified when I post a new video. So to start things off, Cardano, Hydra sharding. What does all that mean? So Hydra is essentially a scalability solution for Ouroboros. Ouroboros is Cardano's proof of stake consensus algorithm and Hydra is going to be really like the final steps for the development of that research. And taking a look at this article here, recently Charles Hoskinson came out with quite a few update videos uh, giving his thoughts and perspectives on the amount of work that's been involved to get this to market. So taking a look at this article, Hydra is the result of five years of research and the efforts of more than two dozen team members. Though the team published its initial build paper in November and submitted its conference paper to Usenix in September, the paper is now publicly available for the first time. Hoskinson adds that Hydra is a key part of Cardano's overarching efforts to create Ouroboros, a scalable proof-of-stake protocol that is capable of maintaining performance as adoption grows. The capstone of this entire research agenda is Ouroboros Hydra, according to him. So what is Hydra? So Hydra relies on state channels as a second layer scaling solution. State channels shard Cardano without sharding the ledger itself. Uh, more generally, state channels hand handle transactions off-chain, offloading transactions from Cardano's main blockchain. Together, these factors improve Cardano's transaction throughput. Hoskinson adds that Hydra sits gracefully on top of Cardano's stake pool system. Each stake pool operator can operate their own stake channel, or Hydra head. Uh, simulation suggests that each head can handle about 1,000 transactions per second. With 1,000 stake pools, each handling 1,000 TPS, Cardano could achieve a throughput as high as 1 million TPS. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I know in his video, he was giving his thoughts and perspectives on some competing uh, competing blockchains as well as services like Visa and, and whatnot, but having that many transactions on a blockchain network that can handle the throughput, right? That's, that's going to be incredible as well as maintaining decentralization because a lot of times you'll see where you have a blockchain that has a really high TPS, but they compromise in some way, whether that's in cent uh, decentralization or whether that's going to be, you know, what type of smart contracts can be executed on the network. Uh, so we can see that Cardano is really covering all their bases here, and Hydra is going to be that scalability solution. And going further in the article here, um, IOHK is now creating a Hydra team. So they will code and implement Hydra in parallel with Cardano's other development stages. Hoskinson notes that Hydra developers will not start from zero thanks to existing work done by Lightning Labs and other state channel researchers. As one of, co as one of the co-founders of Ethereum, Charles Hoskinson is more than familiar with scalability problems on smart contract blockchains. Developers have been working to bring sharding to Ethereum for years. If Hydra is implemented successfully, then Cardano may have solved the persistent scalability issues faced by Ethereum and its challengers. In addition to performance and scaling, Hydra will also be extended to allow for interoperability with platforms like Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. This will allow Cardano and Hydra to support payment systems and decentralized exchanges in the future. And for stake pool operators, Hydra will also provide stake pool operators with a second revenue source in addition to stake rewards. Guys, big news here with Hydra. That's very exciting. Um, I know if you go try and send a Bitcoin transaction, right? It's like you have the security of the Bitcoin blockchain. However, the 
transaction time, it takes a very long time for the network to validate that transaction. And the reason is because all of those transactions are happening on the main Bitcoin blockchain. So with Hydra, essentially it's a sharding solution where you have layers built upon the main Cardano blockchain, and this allows for higher throughput where you don't have to have a transaction be validated on the main Cardano blockchain. You can have a secondary scaling layer built on top of the main chain to handle things like micropayments, micro tipping, you know, smaller transactions. So very cool. I think that it's a great step forward for the Cardano project. The innovation from this team and this project is truly, truly, um, it's just groundbreaking. So next up, what I have for you guys to piggyback off of this here, Brave Browser has reached 12 million monthly active users. So now, recently in the news, Brave's bat rewards can now be redeemed at Amazon, Apple, and Netflix. Nice. Earlier today, on March 10th, Brave announced a partnership with the TAP network, which will allow its users to redeem their basic attention tokens for real-world rewards, offered by 250,000 brands that are part of the network. Currently, uh, access is limited to U.S. users, or at least according to this article. I'm sure that they're working on bringing this out for international uh, users of the platform as well. The announcement said that Brave users in the U.S. will be able to redeem their basic attention tokens for uh, gift cards from hundreds of top national brands. These brands include Uber, Starbucks, Xbox, PlayStation, Hulu, HBO, Amazon, Apple, Target, and Walmart. Um, recently, in a quote, Cointelegraph reached out to Brave, stating that the network of providers is stronger in the U.S. for this launch, so it is about availability. Uh, there are no legal restrictions, but if a user is not in the U.S., they will have less options for the gift cards. So I guess this is something that they're working on. Um, as far as what we know right now, it seems like the availability of some of the reward options are going to be more so in the U.S. So, you know, good news overall. Uh, and then piggybacking off of that, Brave's defense of privacy. So if you guys use another browser like you know Chrome or Safari or, or Firefox, one thing that's very notable about Brave is that they not only block ads and they allow you to earn rewards for watching ads, but they actually keep your privacy into consideration. A lot of these other web browsers, especially Chrome in my experience, uh, you know they track your data, they have your browsing history, all this stuff, they know so much about you just because of your search history on the internet. So Brave is really addressing this situation. Um, and recently, Charles Hoskinson, uh, his opinion was that in the next five years, uh, Brave could overtake Chrome, being that it has so many benefits to users. And taking a look at one of the things that were just recently implemented with Brave, on March 5th, Brave introduced protection from fingerprinting. A browser finger fingerprinting is how advertisers track users online by building a large collection of things that are a little bit unique about your browser and environment. While most browsers are combating this technique by trying to make different browsers look as similar as possible, Brave's approach is different. According to the company, introducing randomization makes every browser look completely unique, both between websites and between browsing sessions. Nice, so not only are you gonna have the benefit of being able to browse privately, but now you can spend your basic attention tokens for things that you would normally buy online, like Amazon, Apple, etc. So lots of cool things happening. Uh, Brave Browser is definitely stepping up the game here for internet browsers. All right, everyone, and last little bit that I have for you guys. Recently, we've seen Bitcoin price taking a beating along with other markets as well. You guys know what's going on with the global news and current events, uh, oil prices sliding and whatnot. So it's gonna be an interesting time as we go forward here. Uh, but taking a look at Bitcoin, I just wanna give you guys some of my thoughts on that. We're taking a look at TradingView and I just wanted to share with you all some of my thoughts and how I like to use some tools on TradingView to get the best experience possible. Uh, so we're looking at Bitcoin on the daily. One thing I like to do is use dark mode. A big, big plus for me, it's a lot easier on the eyes as well. There we go, bam, nice. So dark mode is a big plus for me on TradingView. Uh, taking a look at it here, so we can see that there is a tab here up at the top, which gives us some different options, as well as some tools and tiles here that we can look at here on the left-hand side. Um, for those of you guys who are familiar with TradingView, you guys are gonna 
you know, just find a little bit of value from this, maybe a quick refresher. But for those of you guys who are new to TradingView, uh, here are some of my thoughts and some of the favorite tools that I like to use. Um, a lot of people do like to use things such as Elliott Wave Theory, or they use Cypher Patterns or whatnot. I really like to keep my trading and technical analysis simple by using things such as support and resistance levels, basic indicators like the MACD and the RSI, really, really simple and just trying to keep it as layman as possible. Um, and what we're looking at currently, we can see that recently Bitcoin price has definitely taken a dive. Um, it looks like the bulls kind of stepped in here with this big long wick with some strong volume. It looks like the price is gonna get supported here right around that $8,000 level. Uh, we'll see whether or not we get a nice bounce off of that or whether it's just, um, you know, some like a little dead cat bounce, right? If we continue lower, we shall see. But uh, that is what I'm looking at here where we are right now. And as far as some indicators that I like to use, so if you click up at the top here where it says indicators, my two favorite and probably some of the most common are the MACD and the RSI. I think it's just a very, Good thing to get used to using some basic indicators. Uh, along with support and resistance levels, you don't really have to make things very complicated to have a good trading strategy. So with that, this is the RSI and the MACD brought up here on the daily. As we can see, the RSI uh, right just above that oversold, and it looks like we're starting to curve upward. So we'll see if we do get a nice little push upwards here on the RSI, if some buyers are able to step in at these levels. And we can see that the MACD definitely, you know, was about to have that bullish MACD cross, but the bears stepped in and we continued to slide lower. That's one key thing that I like to look for on the MACD. When we do have a cross here, we can see these lines. Whenever they cross to either the um, downside or the upside, it's typically a good indicator. As we can see, we had a MACD cross right here um, and we had this bearish candle and take a look, we definitely, definitely had some downside so that's one key thing as well. We can see back here, we had a MACD cross and what happened? Price came all the way down here. So uh, not financial advice guys, but uh, you know, just some of the points that I like to look at here as far as using different indicators and chart patterns. Now, as far as my long-term time perspective here with Bitcoin, I'm still extremely bullish on Bitcoin for the long term. You guys know that the Bitcoin having just over a couple months away, things are gonna get very interesting as we go closer into the having. So time will tell, I'm gonna keep you guys updated on all of that. If you guys did find some value from this video here today, go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you guys are new to the channel and if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Until the next video, take care. Thank <laughs> you.